we go to our final guest, who is leading the agricultural revolution, not in Ghana, surprisingly, in Nigeria. But he's doing something also in Ghana. Before we hear from him, the show is brought to you by Bank of Africa, strongest a group and closest a partner, empty and everywhere you go. Star Assurance, your solid partner, Chelsea University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. Robert and Sons Optical Services, your comprehensive eye care service provider for 31 years. Duroplast, how you get your water matters. Remember where Duroplast goes, water flows. St. Thomas Eye Hospital, providing excellence in eye care. Hoptel, everything you. My Way Insurance, you dial star 165 hash on the MTN to join. And Mark Dan Aviation, your dependable private aviation request solved. Abraham Odum, Juma Odum was a member of the 7th Parliament of the 4th Republic of Ghana, representing the Chifu Etimokwa constituency in the central region. He was a Deputy Minister for Local Government and Rural Development between 2005 and 2007. He was an agricultural consultant for cocoa redevelopment at Novel Commodities SA in Geneva, Switzerland from 2014 to 2016. He was also a policy advisor on Competitive Africa Rice Initiative in Nigeria and Bill Melinda Gates Foundation from 2014 to 2016. In Parliament, he was a vice chairman for the Food, Agriculture and Cocoa Affairs Select Committee from 2017 to 2021. Currently, he's a local lead consultant for the NSS Youth into Agriculture Project in Komewu. He speaks to us on Ghana's overdue agricultural transformation and the way forward. Mr. Jumaudu, thank you very much for making the time to join us. Please, thank let's hear you. Thank you, Samson. Let me also join to say uh, Happy New Year to all Ghanaians and especially my esteemed farmers. I mean the peasant farmers, my cocoa farmers, my rice millers, soya bean processors, and poultry farmers as well. And say that we are with them, and we know that 2023 is going to be a prosperous new year for all of them, because we are still talking. Yeah, something like you said, uh, I think my topic for the day, as you have already said, Ghana's Agricultural transformation is long overdue. Ghana have had glimpses of a transformation here and there. One of such was the Operation Feed Yourself. It was a program that came that we should have taken advantage to really transform our agriculture, but we miss it. Why we miss it, I'll be explaining later. Then there was those days that we had the Tamale or Northern Region Rice Revolution. Civil servants will be transferred to the Northern Region and if you want to bring them back to the South, they won't come and they will even resign because what they were getting from the rice production was quite over and above what they were getting from their salaries. All these were opportunities that we should have taken as a country, we should have taken advantage to look at how we can make it more sustainable, but we didn't do it. Then I remember during President Kofor's time or so, uh, I initiated Coco High Tech, if you care to know. Cocoa High Tech, I initiated it with Wienko and then uh, SIF. At that time, SIF was Amadapa, and then the current uh, Director General of NDPC, Dr. Mensah Brampa, and also the Deputy Chief Executive of the Tree Crop, Foster Boatin. We started with 
the Research Institute, Crick, and uh, Dr. Appear of Breasted Memory. When we started it, our focus was on the farmer. We wanted to make sure that cocoa farmer who used to build houses in Kumasi, Kofodia, and Swedro and other towns will rediscover himself. Because at that time that we started our project, we recall that Ghana cocoa production had come down as far as to 250,000 metric tons. In other words, virtually farmers were not getting anything from their farms. I remember as a DC, I went to Dr. Apia at Cocoa Research. Doctor, I've come and I believe that as a district chief executive, I have a responsibility for the socioeconomic aspect of my people. And therefore, I need your assistance. In my district, my people are cutting down their cocoa trees and planting, planting. What can be done? Doctor said, this is a solution. In the carbops here, in the carbops, we have all the research work that we have done that can help cocoa to be transformed from where it is now. We started a project and within one and two years, the results were very phenomenal. So Dr. Piaz and his team kept on coming to Chufu, Himal Lua Denture at that time. And we had this phenomenal cocoa production. No wonder one day we were there, President Kofo sent a team from Cocoa Board and Castle to come and, and study what we have done. When they came and we took them to the farm, I mean, the story was such an interesting story that they had no option but to do a report which report recommended a replication of the Chufu Himalaya Dentra experience. That is what came out to be cocoa high tech in Ghana. So the hope from there, what I learned was that there was a disconnect between research and what was happening on the field. Because here was Dr. Pierre's team who had a lot of research work, and yet that research was not getting to the ground. The moment there was that connection, we saw that phenomenal and that experience was said that if we had taken advantage of it and built upon it, I don't think we would have come to this era now where cocoa farmers are giving their lands up to Galamise, because at the end of the day, I remember those days at SI Hotel. We came there and we sat down, we did a plan for Ghana producing over one million tons of cocoa. So if in 2010, Ghana was able to do one million tons of cocoa, it was as a result of a meeting that we held at SI Hotel 2008, that resorted because there we look at all the issues, what must be done by government and what must be done by the farmers and what must be done by Cocoa Board. And when this thing was pioneered, no wonder in 2010, Ghana hit the mark because at that time, we realized that Ghana had 1.6 million hectares of cocoa land. So if we target that we get one ton per one hectare, it means we're going to get about 1.6 million tons. So at the rate of say 80% performance, we will get about 1 million. And how do you do it? If you can get every tree to give you 25 pots of cocoa, you are getting one kilo. And one hectare, you have 1,100 trees. So at least every hectare could safely give you one ton of cocoa. Mm. That is how we, I mean, arrive at getting one point something million tons. In fact, we targeted 1.2 million tons. So when we hit one million, it means we're on course. 
You see, the opportunity loss is that we couldn't sustain the temple. Now we are coming down. And as we are coming down, the interest of the farmers was also dwindling. So we are talking about the overdue transformation. I mean, we have not... You're talking about deliberate things that you did to give Ghana, you know, first in cocoa production. Yes. What we're seeing right now, yeah. we understand that you are behind this miracle, agricultural revolution in Nigeria. Yes. Where the Central Bank of Nigeria is sponsoring farmers. Yes. And this is just for the rice sector. Yeah. We need to change our economy. Yeah. How do we get to this? Okay, this we can easily get to it. And we have studied. What happened in Nigeria? I'll give you the story. Because of what I did here in Koku, Liberia President Selim Johnson invited President Kufo to let me go there and help them to resuscitate their cocoa. So what I did in Ghana here, we replicated in Liberia. It was there that I came to a realization that Africa need to do something about rice. Because you go to Liberia, something, their staple food is rice. And yet they were importing everything. It was there that I did a concept paper, brought it to President Kufo, that Mr. President, now that you are out of office and you are coming out with a foundation to help, can we do this in agriculture? And he accepted it. Then he asked me to see one professor, uh, Amano Legon, Economic Department. Over there, he helped me to polish my concept paper. Then when we went to Washington, when President Kofo was going to be award, giving an award in a, a cocoa production, we met Michigan State University, Katanga and Poverty Foundation, and they also helped to upscale the concept paper. And then it became between uh, Bill and Minda Gates Foundation and President Kofo Foundation, where we were going to do rice. And the project was competitive African Rice Initiative. In other words, if Africa has to do rice, we have to do it competitively in terms of quality and then the price and then also availability because you cannot compete with the Thai, uh, Thailand's and the Vietnam's rice if you don't look at these three components of rice production. That's quality the price, and then availability. And the project was in Ghana, Burkina, Nigeria, and Tanzania. I was in the head office, that is uh, Nigeria. So when I was there, then I realized it was an opportunity for me as a leader to also do something to help Africa. And what I did was I taught the whole of Nigeria and then came back and said, no, this is an opportunity for Nigeria because Nigeria has everything that it takes to do rice. Land is there, water is there, the sunshine is there. The same thing in Ghana here. That's the question. So what I did was... Our economy is suffering yes. because of issues including import substitution. Yes. So what I did was I recognized that I needed to call the stakeholders and I'll be talking to, about it, the value chain. The, so I recognize the banks, the farmers, the millers, input dealers, insurance, customs, immigration. I mean, people who have to do with import of rice and everything. Then we had a meeting. And in that meeting, I asked a question that we have this, we have this, we have that. That put together can make us produce enough rice. So what is the problem? 
And we realized it was the links between the stakeholders. For instance, the input dealers, instead of giving the right inputs to the farmers, were giving wrong inputs, counterfeit, fake. Instead of seeds, uh, seeds they would give them grain. Instead of fertilizer, I mean, the right components, they would give them fake one. Instead of pesticides, the correct, the correct pesticides, they give them fake ones. So at the end of the day, the farmer starts and it is all going down. They take a loan and they cannot pay. So bankers are also afraid to give them a loan. So at the end of the day, what we did was, let's get the, weeks and the links corrected. So between the input dealer, the biller, and the farmers, we try doing a program which I dubbed reorganization and then reorientation. The reorganization was bringing the groups together, stakeholders, you are, you are grouped together, become very vibrant. In other words, farmers be in the communities, local government areas, to the state and to the federal level, were, became very uh, visible. And then bankers could locate them anytime that they wanted. The same thing to the input dealers as well as the mailers. When we have done that, and then the banks saw that these groups have become so visible and they were more or less holding themselves to be able to serve as collateral even to support themselves. Then central bank said, okay, we are going to give you commercial bank a loan at 7%. You give it or lend it to them at 9%. They gave it to the uh, mailers, which mailers will also give to uh, the farmers as well as the input dealers so that they will produce. And at the end of the day, when the technical teams were also helping that, here I'm talking about extension services. We had a team that was working on the extension services, club management, and we were able to move from 1.5 metric tons per hectare to about five and six metric tons. So in other words, hmm. any money that was pumped into the project was coming back. So the cycle kept on going and going. And then we realized the local production was shooting from two million to three to five and six. But the state also banned the importation that of is these when we foreign go rights. To, yes, when we got to about five, that was where the advocacy was working. That when we get to this point, try and stop importation of rice. Mm. That is why in 2016, 2017, there about, Nigeria stopped importation. So, so let's get to the conclusion. We, we've done quite a bit of time. But in Ghana, I'm not sure we are even producing 20% of the rice that we consume. Mm. Poultry, as we learned last week on this platform, we are not producing, we're producing like 1% of the poultry that we consume. This revolution can be replicated in our country. It can. So? Because, because the same resources that were available that I, I saw in Nigeria that I talk about, it's also available here in the country. Are you working for our government? Are you ensuring that this is happening in well, our like country as said, well? Like you said, currently I'm working with the National Service Secretariat, mm. where we are working in the 24th. I was even at... That's not what you did in Nigeria. <laughs> 24 not National Service Secretary. Yet. <laughs> National... Oh, okay. In, you, you mean in, uh, in, in Ghana, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Nigeria, it was a National Service. Exactly. It was National. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we, what I have done, besides National Service Secretariat, I'm in touch with the rice farmers, the peasant farmers, Poultry Farmers Association and the millers. At your private consultancy? Yes, level. where we are trying to, because we need the private sector also to gear themselves, ginger themselves up. And as they are coming up, then they can be able to have a voice to engage government 
to be able to do the kind of thing that Nigeria government also did for them. We, we did, uh, you know, farming for whatever it is, food for whatever it is, planting for food, planting for food and food and jobs. This is where we are looking forward to people like you to ensure a revolution and not something that we will only talk about without much to show. Oh, yes, I agree with you. But uh, currently, I would say that efforts are being made. Because recently, we were in uh, Sopoli, where I, I was part of uh, the commissioning of the economic enclave there. The minister assured us he's coming to uh, Kumawu also to commission our own together with the chief of staff. And we are really working. And I, I, I believe that. And this will coalesce into a plan. Yeah, a plan. National plan. A national plan. That can bring us to what you have uh, you know, led Nigeria to get. De definitely, definitely. That is what I am uh, looking up to. Because now that we have finished the uh, Eastern and then the water enclave, mm. and we are coming to the Ashanti enclave, once we start the Ashanti enclave, it will collate into a national plan okay. where our target is getting uh, Ghana out of rice importation. We'll take your final statement in one minute. Yeah. The final statement is that, one, we would have to look at agriculture as a business. It shouldn't be anything like a development item where we do politics like uh, uh, Mr. Roland said. And I will wish that we situate agriculture seriously in NDPC, where NDPC will have a plan for our agriculture. NDPC would give political parties that will come four years and ten, eight years what must be done. For instance, if we decide that we don't want to import rice, we don't want to import any other thing, it's NDPC who will be uh, championing it through our political parties. If we're able to do that, then as a country, we'll be able to come out of a lot of importation because it's sad, for instance, for us to import toothpick. It's sad for us to import poultry because we have everything that we can do to uh, create, uh, I mean, do our own uh, chicken. Poultry, and we are importing anyway. 99 percent of that. Yes. And here in Ghana, I've started some pilot projects somewhere where we are doing free range, not even cage, free range. And it is, the performance is very, very, uh, I mean, amazing. Okay. Thank you very much. That is Abraham Juma Odum, the man spearheading an agricultural revolution in Nigeria as far as rice production is concerned. And we hope and pray that the nation is tapping into his expertise to replicate that, to ensure an organic economic revival for Ghana, because that's where we must get to, so that we don't continue to go back to the IMF. Mm -hmm.